So what is the most, um, one of the negative uh, aspects in terms of engineering? What is your thought on this statement? Okay, maybe, maybe the student can, can share with us what he thinks about engineering before we right, good. share the industry perspective. Maybe you can share why you decided to do engineering. Oh, um, for me, for me personally, what I decided to do was um, just uh, a bit of background. Before, before I uh, came here to, to study engineering, I did a diploma in law and management in uh, Temasek Poly. And uh, the reason why I shifted from that to engineering was, was mainly because I felt uh, while, while doing law that uh, it, was only, it was not very so-called practicable in real life, not very relevant. Like, uh, like you only function in a very uh, niche aspect of the world as compared to Engineer, because my dad is an engineer. He has a small, uh, he's a civil engineer. He has a small firm that does like, he's like contractor like that. He does like small jobs here and there. Uh, yeah, so he, he always like, he'll tell me about his, his daily life and the job and all that. And um, also during the army, I was, uh, I was in armor. So I was, I worked with a lot of uh, mechanical stuff. Like I, I was a, a BMX uh, sergeant. Like it's, it's, it's like a smaller tank, so to speak. Yeah, so then we, I had to deal with a lot of mechanical aspects of that. They really like piqued my, my interest in the engineering field. So um, because of that, I decided to, to shift to engineering because uh, while doing that, I went to learn a bit more on my own uh, mm. part because I mean, the army also asked me to and also, I also went to research a bit and I realized that engineering is, is prevalent in almost every aspect of the world. Like the world runs on, uh, on the engineering uh, concepts and, and principles. So yeah, that's, that's what engineering is to me personally. Okay, one of the going back to Shafiq's question, right? I mean, thanks, thanks, Isaac, yeah. for your for your for your input. Yeah. Then going back to Shafiq's question, I mean, some of the bad things that we hear about engineering is that you know, when the light spoils, nobody knows the difference between technician, engineer, <laughs> or just go and get the guy, go up there, go and replace it. You know, doesn't work, get the guy to go and get it. So there's a stigma when it comes to engineering as a profession. You are just a staff going get it up. It doesn't. It is not seen as a core component. People don't market it as a core component of society. I mean, look at the pandemic situation right now. Public transport have to continue to operate. You look at uh, institution now. You can see what is essential, what is not essential. Right. I mean, healthcare as a whole. Of course, we respect our nurses, our doctors, but the air conditioning system must work perfectly. If not, the air will be contaminated. You know, these things are maintained by engineers. And to maintain these systems, you need expertise, you need the proper training, you need the proper people to advise accordingly. So maybe some of the bad things that I, I heard over the years is, you know, you are just a, you are just a, go and repair the blah, blah. And you know, that, that sort of thing. People don't look at engineering as a viable option, you know, a respectable profession as a whole. And I think it has to do with, uh, Marketing, yeah, I mean, engineers as a whole must market the profession better. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, I think one of the negative things that I've heard about engineering is that it's a, it's a tough job. It's a, you're down on the ground. It's a bit dirty. Um, you crawl through pipes. Yes. You, have to walk, you have to work under the sun. Construction industry, <clears throat> you know, dusty. Yes, yes. Uh, so, I mean, just to share with you, I mean, I, I, I came from, um, my, my basic degree was in civil engineering. So I worked as a uh, site civil engineer um, in the beginning when I just started off. So I can say yes, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit tough, but that was so many years ago. So what my point here is that uh, with technology these days, um, there's so much uh, that, that digital there's so much that uh, technology, uh, equipment, software can actually help us. Mm -hmm. uh, the work as an engineer now, I can't really say that you have to go through all these kind of physical hardships. Um, uh, and, 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 but to be fair, there are still uh, you know, colleague, colleagues and, and engineers out there who still have yeah. to work uh, in, in, let's say, very difficult conditions. Um, and bringing back to the point about the technicians who, you know, fixing a bulb, fixing, fixing a bus, for yes, example. Um, I would like to perhaps share um, that recognition is, is given to, to technicians and to technologists uh, in areas of engineering. Um, the Institute of Engineers, uh, last year, uh, during one of the platforms, uh, Minister uh, Ong Ye Kung, 
uh, the Minister for Education, um, uh, opened up uh, and, and, and made known that recognition to technic technicians and technologists are on the way. And the Institution, Institution of Engineers, IES for short, um, is, is working very hard uh, to come up with a framework uh, to recognize and to actually give chartered ships. So similarly, like a professional engineer or a chartered engineer, um, they are also recognizing uh, uh, our fellow technicians and technologists mm -hmm. in this area. And I would also say that technicians and, te and technologists, they are a bit different from, let's say, design engineers and so, you know, and, and other parts of engineering. Um, we see them as craftsmen master craftsmen uh, yes, in correct. their trade. People yes. who are very good uh, with their hands and, and very, very good on the ground uh, mm -hmm. are dealing with situations uh, on site. So I think uh, that is a very encouraging mm -hmm. um, way forward. Uh, and I would also say that given this recognition, um, engineering is uh, so much better. Yes. Yeah. And, I, and I, mm -hmm. to add on to Jasmine's point, I think the, the, the landscape is also changing. People are recognizing it as a core profession nowadays. Compared to many, many years ago when, when we started, you know, uh, I think it's a very good, good, good thing. And I think IES has done a fantastic job pushing this thing out, working together with the industry to, to make sure that, you know, proper recognition is given to every tier in the engineering profession, especially our technicians, technical officers, who might have years and decades of experience but because of certain, you know, qualifications and all, oh, they might not be able to move up the career ladder. And I think IES has done a pretty good job in, in sending this message out. Yeah. yeah. I think it's very important. Yeah. So, yeah. So in terms of the trends of the engineering industry in today's context, um, uh, do, you, do you see, maybe you want to share a bit more of the demand and the new technology that is in place that... Uh, have some sort of the hiring trends in today's context for our future graduates? Maybe I can share first. Uh, when it comes to building industry, uh, 12 years ago, when I started out, we, we do redrawings, 2D drawings. You know, there's something called consolidated system drawing, where all the MNE services, mechanical, electrical services will be compiled into one 2D drawing. Imagine seeing, seeing one system on a 2D drawing can be challenging itself. Imagine seeing 10 different services on the same drawing with different heights and all. So it takes a lot of years of experience and practice to, to read those things. But moving forward to 2020, we don't need to do that anymore. There's something called BIM. It's 3D. Everybody runs their service at each individual levels and everybody can see. And, and of course, architects have an added advantage in this juncture, meaning you know they can actually see the Arch, uh, the architectural portion, interior design, whether whether the services are running, you know, in a very proper manner or whatever. So this is now, which is a lot more reduced effort compared to our Madaka generation, you know, pioneer generation, maybe my generation. Those, though I was fortunate enough to be trained under them, even though I'm not not that. So, moving forward, we are looking at BIM, five dimensional. They see the whole project throughout in the system. You know, it can literally show you where the piling goes first, you know, the whole project phase, which I think is very useful. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, that's one of the changes that I see in the industry for construction. Just want to share a bit. Um, I tend to, I agree. Because I think uh, these days technology plays a very big part in, in, in our role as an engineer. Um, Let's say gone were the days were you know physical manual calculation. Now it's so fast you get calculations done in 15 minutes. Uh, compared to you have to really draw something from scratch. I still remember doing 3D drawings <laughs> from scratch. Yeah. yeah, that really took me a very long time because I'm not very good at drawing. Uh, but that none less to say, it's 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 software that helps us so much. Uh, predictive models are, are tools that we use. Um, to help us to identify very quickly what are the problem areas and we zoom in, it increases our efficiency. Um, so I must say that uh, compared to, to last time, you know, this is the trend going towards uh, uh, engineering. Yeah. Calculation has been made a lot more easier. <laughs> I used to do, you know, that thing calculation, duck by duck, you know, it takes a very long time. Now you just, you know, uh, tell the system A, B, 
it will give you almost 80% to 90% you know accurate answer then from there you know you fine tune so things have become much more efficient productivity has improved that's for sure yeah yeah you can do several permutations right. in, exactly. in 10 minutes already now yeah. compared to last time right yeah, yeah. I'll go back the question to Isaac. Uh, how has your experience been like as an engineering student? You can be in the classroom, out of the classroom context. Maybe you want to share a bit more on this. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, for, for me personally as an engineering student now, um, you know, I, I, I find it very interesting. It's lovely. Like I enjoy it very much as compared to my, uh, my previous course of study. Like um, <clears throat> as I said earlier, you know, the, 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 when doing law and management, it's very... Uh, I, like, I personally felt that it wasn't very uh, relatable in, in, the, in, the real, in the real world and I didn't get to practice it much and all that. But now uh, by studying engineering like in the classroom, um, through the theoretical concepts that I learned, uh, the, the projects I do in the, in the lab, as well as the, the whole practicality of this, of this uh, profession, like, has made it much more interesting and I, I feel very motivated like, daily. Like, my interest and my motivation grows daily. And... Um, like uh, out of the classroom, uh, you know, I'm also thankful for the the opportunities that I get to to firstly be a part of the IES chapter, like the, this organization. You know, like I wouldn't I wouldn't get that in uh, in other places, and uh, also the people I meet, like especially in uh, being in PSB, like as compared to other, like I I'm, I must be honest, my first choice wasn't to to come here. I wanted to go to a local institution to 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 do engineering, but because of what I studied previously, the the, the road back to that was very long and I, I couldn't afford the time now in this, in this uh, context because of my own personal situation. So I came here and uh, I'm very thankful for that because I get to meet people from, from all over the world and I, I feel like I have a, a broader and wider uh, take on, on my view as compared to my other peers in the local institutions as well as um, I have a, a more inclusive and empathic feel for people. Uh, but Besides that, also by, by being part of by being part of all this uh, by being part of the organization and, and, and all the engineering students around me, I, I I get to meet a lot of like like minded peers and, and network with them. And uh, in the future, like uh, not just in Singapore, my, my options are are expanded to, to the to the nearby regions. And I'll just to end it off, I'll just say it's, it's been a very uh, uh, rewarding and fulfilling experience of being an engineering student. Oh, most importantly, also, uh, I, I'm also very thankful for for the for the for the chance to meet Mr. Shafiq, who is who is you know, who has been a great a great mentor to me, and, and got to build a very uh, genuine and, and cherished relationship. So that's the main that's my main draw from being an engineering student so far. Yeah, yeah that's great. Morning relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a minute to? I had to say. Oh, that. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay, let's go back to Isaac. I'll uh, pass the question to Jasmine and uh, Syed. <laughs> Uh, what what uh, advice in terms of uh, what is it important for Isaac uh, as an engineering student, right? What is it important and how uh, what what are the take for him to be more uh, employable as a graduate uh, in the coming months or in the next few years? Yeah. You sure. want to go first? Sure, sure. Um, I think uh, any engineering student these days, um, as I mentioned just now. It's very integrated these days. In engineering, you cross over, you speak to a lot of people. I think it's very important to keep a very open mindset uh, and to be curious. Right. Uh, open mindset meaning that uh, you know you have to be speaking to a lot of people across different engineering or even across different sectors uh, to un to be able to understand their problems to solve their issues. So uh, keeping an open mind, uh, you know, allows you to to absorb, allows you to to um, to to invite. Uh, mm. more, more questions and to, and to be able to create more things together with uh, your, your counterpart. So I think that's, that's pretty important. Um, staying curious, uh, yesterday um, we had an announcement. So I think the Minister Ong Ye Kung has also said uh, three things. Stay home, stay safe, stay curious. So that was his, his advice uh, to, to the students out there. And I think that applies definitely right. to all students, even in, in, in the tertiary level. Mm. Um, curiosity uh, builds um, your knowledge mm. because you are thirst for, for information, thirst for to understand. Hey, what is how does that thing work? You know, can can I need to improve that this 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 whole process? Mm. So I think it's, it's a very important thing these days. Okay. And you know, we have our infrastructure built up already. So now mm. we are enhancing, we are developing it to make it even better. So mm. we we need those curiosity. Yeah. Okay, for me personally, I think there's two advice. 
to all young engineer. I mean, aspiring engineers. One thing uh, I think Isaac already has a start. Good start is communication. Okay. okay. Technical skills can be learned. Communication must be developed because no matter how good is your design, if you're not able to communicate, you will not be able to cascade down information to your peers. You will not be able to communicate to different departments. You must be able to have that communication skill. You must be fluent. You must make it simple. You cannot go to your, you know, top management and explain on thermodynamics and, okay. <laughs> I mean, jokes aside, uh, that is not what they are supposed to be looking at. You should be able to give solutions, which they are able to make decisions on. So communication is very important, especially when you are going up the career ladder to become managers and above. That is very important. Another thing is knowledge transfer, because there is a lot of uh, very talented engineers in the market right now who might be retiring soon. So that, that gap is very important. So if, if an opportunity comes up, if you are able to be under, you know, tutorage under them, learn as much as possible, regardless of level, especially technicians, technical officers. Mm. There, there are, uh, even, even in, in places that I've worked before, there are technicians, technical officers who have been working there for four years. They may know certain things which will never be covered in the classroom setting. And this will awaken your mind, which, which goes back to Jasmine's point, that curiosity. Young engineers must be able to learn as much as possible and must be able to communicate. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's my, yeah. That, do these two have helped me over the years. I mean, these two has uh, tremendously helped me, these, these two advice. It, also, it was also given to me by one of my ex-bosses. So I'm just, you know, you know no, I'm just transfer. kind of, yeah, transferring <laughs> that, that, that wisdom back to our, our future graduates. Yeah. Sure, I think it's very, very yeah. important to, to be able to communicate properly because yes, yes. Um, management-wise, yeah. you may not understand the, the lingo, technicalities, the technicality, keep and it to, simple. Sometimes to put it into simple English, I think that is very difficult. Difficult, very difficult. <laughs> and for that, you need to understand what you are communicating. Yes. You must make it, dump it down to the you know, simple, simple language so that people below can understand as well. You know, they, you know, in, in the, you know, but nobody else knows. And, and it doesn't help anybody when, when it goes to that. Go, goes to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, okay, the last one, um, let, let, let us share a bit more of, um, in terms of, uh, if you have, you could give a piece of advice to our current student or even to a student who wants to enter engineering field, what is your piece of advice that would you like to share across? We will start off with sure. either one. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I'm still thinking. Okay. Because I mean, the, I think that the, it still applies, the curiosity right. still applies. Right. Um, and I mean, I, I've met a couple of engineering students recently. I've, I've started mentoring mm. right. a couple of students. Um, and one of them was interested in engineering, mm -hmm. uh, but his polytechnic studies was not in engineering. Okay. It was from a science, okay. a very hardcore biological science mm -hmm. uh, topic. Um, but he said that he was interested in, in environmental engineering, so he decided to take it on. Um, so I think uh, he was also sharing with me that he was uh, trying to bridge the gap uh, between a science and science topic and an and a, and a, and a engineering uh, uh, tertiary uh, education. education. So I think he was, he was also, um, uh, let's say, struggling a little bit with, with math and with physics. Yeah, so I think um, if anybody out there interested in engineering, probably these are the topics that you might probably need to pay a little bit more attention. Right. That's probably my take. Yeah. Okay. Um, if, if personally my take is, uh, there are careers which comes in between engineering and management. One, one thing that I practice myself is project management. Okay. So uh, if you're not, because of certain limitation, maybe the polytechnic or what, if they're not able to go into engineering, they may be more interested, I mean, they can still choose another option, a very viable career option, which allows them to do a small portion of engineering in, in the manner of management. Of course, they will not be able to practice as an engineer eventually, mm. even after so many years. It might not be possible. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's impossible. It might not be possible. 
but there are career options, you know, facility managers, project managers, they, they come in between. They don't need to be hard mm. engineering. You know, you, you don't even need a science degree or engineering at certain. So there are other career options. Of course, um, as time goes on, right? If they have the time, they can always take a part-time degree course to do their engineering if they are really very passionate about. Mm. Okay, so that option is available in Singapore. I'm mm. sure PSB offers quite a lot of uh, part-time degrees and TU offers, mm. US offers. Yes. If you're able to go into these schools, so I don't think uh, I don't think that is an issue. Mm. Okay. But, but doing an engineering degree, having said that, takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of time, takes a lot of dedication. I'm saying this because I spent eight years as a part-time student. I did my bachelor's part-time. I did my master's part-time. So it's, um, it can be a bit, you know, uh, challenging uh, when it comes to time management and all, but it can be done. I mean, if I can do a master's yeah. up to part-time, I think it can, can be, it's doable. Yeah, it is possible. Yeah, yeah it is possible, but the commitment must be there. Okay. Uh, engineering is not the most easiest degree to do, mm. yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. Actually, so, like to, sorry. Yeah. Maybe I'd like to add on. Yeah. Side was saying on the other, uh, looking from the other approach. You're saying that um, a person who has uh, you know maybe a science background interested in do part of engineering. Yes. On the other hand, somebody close to me um, did mechanical engineering, um, but he was uh, very interested to be in the medical field from a very young age. But because of his fear of uh, blood and you know operation and things like that, so he, he didn't really pursue that. Okay. Um, but he took on a mechanical mm. engineering and later he specialized in uh, biomechanical engineering. And today he works for a very large uh, medical device uh, equipment company. So that still fulfills yes, his, yes, yes, his, yes. his aspirations to help yes. people because he's very interested in medicine. He wants to help people. Yeah. So in, in that certain way, I think engineering can still be part of uh, uh, your, your, your aspirations. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's worthwhile to, to, to investigate. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, because the four branches of engineering, right, yeah. will cover every industry that mm. exists. Mm. Chemical, civil structure, I mean, yeah. civil, electrical and mechanical. It will cover every aspect of our daily lives, you know. Mm. So from your chopping board, that metal is mechanical, manufacturing. Yeah. <laughs> that board is chemical, you know, it's yes. biological. You know, we will touch every single bit of human, even if they are not, even if they are not living in a metropolitan city, even if they are in the forest, you know, you can, you know, starting a fire is fire engineering, ultimately. Yeah, that's right. The cooking. Yeah. So we will touch everything and everybody. So it's how you look at your job, whether it contributes to society as a whole. Yeah. Thank you um, uh, for sharing the insights on the industry uh, aspect. Um, so now let's move on to the questions from our audience who join us on a live streaming today. Um, so first question, what are the most sought after types of engineering? Mm. No, uh, no, no need to discuss further, definitely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, in the current age, they always say artificial intelligence and all. It goes back to the previous answer I, I made. Everything goes back to the four branches of engineering. Electrical, electronics mm. fall under that. IT goes under that. Mm. Mechanical. Everything under the manufacturing, you know, it's a, it, it goes under the huge tree. Civil structure is, is another tree. And of course, chemical covers everything else. So eventually, these four branches will always be there. And the sub-branches are all those digital science. You know, science, computer engineering is a very upcoming thing in the market because like, like during the pandemic, you know, you can still do a lot of things from home, you know, work from home. And that requires all this internet infrastructure, IT infrastructure. And to protect these things, you need all those, you know, IT specialists, all those uh, infrastructure specialists. So computer service engineers are very in demand. Mm. But of course, most of them have a background in electrical engineering, and especially the older ones. So um, the four big branch of engineering is still, is still the, the core, but it has been broken down into subcategories, which yes. may be more relevant to the current, yeah. Jasmine, your views on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, just looking across the market, lah, mm. at this moment, I think IT engineers yes. has the highest uh, yeah. starting mm. pay. But that being said, um, the world is getting very small. 
uh, you have to now travel out, either travel out to work or to you know go overseas, support a, a project from there, or you work in Singapore, mm -hmm. regardless uh, of, of what you, there would be opportunities to, to, be, to be out of Singapore or to be in Singapore itself. So the type of engineering being sought after worldwide is so, you know, I'm, I'm talking worldwide because we are, we're going across uh, different countries now. It's, it's very different from country to country. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for a country that is developing, infrastructures would be very important. Yes. The three, the three or four main yeah, uh, the type four of engineering categories would of, be necessary yeah. for a developed country. Um, you'll be enhancing the infrastructure. So Cyber security. That's right. So system engineering, precision yes. engineering, this type of uh, uh, subcategory type of engineering would be very sought after. So to be, to be fair, I think all sorts of uh, engineering is, is being sought after. It just depends on you know, uh, where you'll be applying those engineering uh, knowledge uh, and, 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 and where your interest would be, of course. Yeah. So we'll move on to the next question. What is the average pay for a fresh graduate mm. with a bachelor degree? <laughs> okay. It depends highly on the market that they are going. So uh, having said that, of course, like we discussed earlier, in Singapore, there's a demand for IT specialists, engineers, computer science students. So if you're from that faculty, you may have a... So it's supply and demand. Ultimately, it goes, goes back to supply and demand. So uh, my, my view is for the remaining branches of engineering, don't be disheartened because we are definitely needed to run things. Uh, focus on learning especially if you are a very junior engineer. Eventually, try to climb up the career ladder, take on more responsibilities, learn more things, especially those things pertaining to finance, all those budgeting and all. It will help you in your career because eventually that should be the route and, and you should be good to go. So instead of focusing on the starting pay, I think we, our engineers should be looking at what they can learn and how fast they can learn so that they can be competitive. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't think I can add on anything yeah. more than that. But just yeah. to answer the okay, question, yeah. but just to answer the question, I've seen online that starting pay of fresh graduates are between 3,005 to about 4,003. Yeah, depending of, on your levels. class also, depending yeah. on which institution. Yeah. And depending on what kind of engineering. Yeah, so. what kind of engineering. Mm. Uh, that's the rough range. Yeah. Okay, we hope you answered that question. We will move on to the next one. Can I earn big bucks <laughs> from being yes, an engineer? Sure, sure. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. This, this answer is a definite yes, but you may not be able to earn big bucks if you remain as an engineer. You must take on management role. I mean, uh, we know plenty of uh, engineers who have done, who are CEOs of, of a lot of companies in Singapore. So, I just go and Google, you know, the CEOs of top listed com companies in Singapore. Uh, so there is that path, but, but to reach that path, you need to put in, you know, the relevant amount of effort, you know, you need to take on more responsibilities. You must do management work, but definitely the path is there. Yeah. For engineers. Mm. That, that's my view. Yeah. Okay. To answer the question. Yes. Definitely. Because yeah. uh, engineers, the way that we are trained uh, to, to, to go through a certain process, uh, think through a certain process uh, to design, uh, it's, it's the type of training is very sought after. So, of course, you know, as an engineer and a, and a natural career pathway, uh, you would become a manager or, you know, a managing a director, a CEO in time to come. Yeah. Um, and let's just give an example uh, of, of uh, very well-known design engineers they earn very big bucks yeah. from, from designing, you know, very, yeah. very, very well uh, in, in, their, in their own area of, of, of uh, design. Yeah, so like, for example, I'm sure uh, Apple designers, you know, the engineers that work with them, they very are very well paid. Very well paid, yeah. Google, yeah. for example, as well. Yeah. yeah. So the pathway is there, but, but uh, out of 100, you know, there are certain who will go up to management level. So that expectation must be managed the amount of effort that we want to put into our work, day-to-day -day work, the amount of responsibilities that we take on during work, that has to be managed. I mean, the person who is doing a lot more have a higher probability. I wouldn't say they confirm that the, the, the probability increases. 
to, to eventually climb in your career ladder. But I think the fundamentals is very important because like what Jasmine said, it's the thought process. You do A, B may happen. Mm -hmm. That is very sort of out. So if our fundamentals are very weak, if we just got a degree, you know, for namesake may not be that, you know, useful in our long-term career. Yeah. Right. Our next question here, I think is, um, I believe mm. is directing to Isaac. And uh, uh, are engineering projects at school very tough to complete? Okay. So, uh, to answer that, I feel it, it varies between person to person. But uh, for, for me personally, I think it's, it's, it's very manageable, especially with the, if, you, if you pay attention in class and you listen to the teacher and you have good um, classmates around, like you, have to make, you have to make friends like, in school so that you all can learn together. Because if, if you learn by yourself, you cannot catch everything. And some, some people might be better at other things uh, than you like. Some, some people might be better at the theory and calculation aspects. Some people like, uh, like for me, mechanical engineer, we do uh, SOLIDWORKS, you know, then uh, some people might be better at the, the computer part of the, of the project. And some people might be better at even just editing the, the work and making it look professional. So mm. I feel the engineering projects, it's, it's not easy, but it's manageable if you have the right, um, the right, the right mindset and the right uh, team around you. So, yeah. Well done. Yeah. Collaboration. Yeah. You're ready for it. You're ready to, to enter the industry. <laughs> <laughs> he hit all the right points. Yeah, exactly. Teamwork, yes. teamwork, collaboration, communication, yes. Yes. Yeah. which is very important because in a team, you may have certain people who are better in certain things. Yes. Okay. So it might not be a case whereby I do chapter A, you also do chapter A mm -hmm. because we need to be fair. Mm -hmm. You need to look at who is better in what and, you know, distribute the work. Yeah. yeah that's, that's very important. Thank you for sharing. Um, we'll move on to the next question from our audience. Um, what kind of experience should I pick up during my studies? Um, maybe this is quite relevant to Isaac as well again. Um, during your time as a student, uh, what kind of experience do you, do you partake and take on upon? Um, for me, I feel uh, that during, during your time as a student, you shouldn't uh, just stick to, the, stick to the classroom, so to speak, like you should um, go on and explore and during your free time like what else what else you can do like you know you can you can uh, even volunteer like you don't have to volunteer like in an engineering uh, capacity like even joining an engineering student chapter you should you might even want to join like other clubs and all that, so that you can maybe meet people and and um, grow as a person because as as i'm sure um, uh, Ms. jasmine and sai has mentioned that commun communication is important so by meeting people and getting a lot of people from different walks of life uh, you can work on a lot of the, the soft skills that, that you will need in the in the future as well as, um, by the more technical aspect also in engineering, you should probably, you know, maybe go for certification courses for, for some, uh, the, those, those rele relevant uh, knowledge that you need. Like, um, I, I heard like AutoCAD now is very uh, prevalent in the industry, that kind of stuff. Yeah, like the technical aspect. And, uh, yeah, and uh, most importantly, you should meet Mr. Shafiq. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's it for me. Okay. <laughs> I think uh, industry attachments. Yes. Internship, huh? right. that's that's Very, pretty important. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's 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 not really just to 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 go pick up and 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 see you know what how the people would, mm. would work uh, in in the industry. It's also an opportunity for both the employer of the intern and the intern himself or herself to 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 know is that is this is this specialization what, what I want what I want yes yeah. that's a very important. Thing. And it's a fantastic opportunity mm -hmm. uh, if you really like what you do in your internship to impress upon the, your, your future employer mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, we have built up this relationship. I think uh, the employer most of the time would actually hire the intern might, yes. because, you know, the relationship is built already. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Good so, intern. internships are important. If you can get some mentorship from the industry, I think that would be good as well. Uh, other than that, Personally, I think it would be good for students to join uh, student chapters mm. so they have direct access to real engineers. They don't ever, I mean, uh, internship is internship. I mean, that's work related. Uh, I mean, every faculty, if I'm not wrong, uh, is offering internship. There's, there's, the value add is, is uh, of course, significant, but not the, the, the addition top up is not there. But uh, in, in this case, if you are in IEA student chapter, for example, you may be attending networking events where, you know, some of the bosses of the engineering companies might be there. Mm. So you also ha can network. 
get to know, which may give you an additional, you know, to, to secure jobs. Ultimately, it's about jobs. We, we need to create employment for our engineering graduates. We know of countries whereby there are hundreds of thousands of engineers who are doing something related, totally unrelated to engineering. So jobs are very important. I think, uh, I think it is a very good opportunity to get to know future prospective employees. Mm. Thank you for uh, yeah. sending that point. Because the Institution yeah. of Engineers uh, <laughs> has uh, members uh, with about six or 7,000 members. Yeah. Um, and it's really a melting pot of uh, practicing uh, engineers, yes. the veterans, mm -hmm. the, the fresh graduates. Aspiring. And, and aspiring and yeah. including the, the student chapters as yeah. well. So we have student chapters uh, from, from, from all the tertiary un, uh, universities. Um, and uh, we also have a lot of outreach programs. So it's a great opportunity for networking. It's a great opportunity to, to meet your prospective uh, employer. employer. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so you are directly connecting to prospective employers. Yeah. I mean, that is, that, that is worth time worth spending for, especially with engineers who have some free time in their hand. Uh, right. So yeah. let me summarize. Um, get involved in our student chapters here and also um, get in touch with your classmates in terms of communication skills. Right. So we'll move on to the next question uh, from our audience. Um, is artificial intelligence a required skill set? for mechanical and electrical engineering? You want to answer? answer. Okay. Um, from the industry perspective, AI will eventually touch everything, including design. So, so our perspective when it comes to design now is we have a couple of engineers sitting down there, you know, calculating all those parameters, putting it together, right? In future, the AI may already know what to calculate. So our input will be a lot more lesser. So you may not need to design AI, but you must be able to work and use them as tools. Something like how we use our phones mm -hmm. and our computers. AI might become a tool which is essential to engineers. And, and we should be open to that, 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 that thinking. So a lot of things we are doing right now, like design work and all, might be eventually overtaken by or is artificial intelligence. So uh, we also need to look at where we stand when these jobs are taken and how we can assimilate. But, but for sure, AI will become a tool in maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years now. It will be a tool. Yeah. Jasmine, you want to share a bit on the question? Yeah. Sure. I mean, um, I think I definitely agree with what yeah. yeah. says. Uh, artificial intelligence would be a necessity, not only just mechanical and electrical. Yeah. I think it would be across all what, industries. For all industries yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's related, related to robotics. Yes. Say. So things will be very automated next time. We, will ha we are already testing out uh, automated uh, vehicles, buses, yes. um, processes in, in um, you know, environmental sectors like you know, waste processing. Um, is fast upcoming with, with using mechanical means to help. And I think sooner or later, there will be a lot of robotics involved in those as well. Yeah. So yes, I think it's, it's crucial. Yeah, it's mm. important. Okay, we will move on to the last question from our audience for this afternoon. So if you had the choice to restart and choose your path in life, what would you have done differently in your career as an engineer? We will start off with Jasmine first. Sure. Uh, what have I done differently? Um, okay, not just because I'm from IES and I'm from IES, <laughs> but truly, truly, I think for me, I, I wish that I had started with IES earlier. <laughs> um, I think of volunteering my time um, uh, and, and the networking opportunities within IES has created a lot of, um, of uh, opportunities for me. I have seen a lot, I've met a lot of people, um, uh, increase my horizon. Um, and I think I should have started earlier. Um, I think I, it took me six years before I, <laughs> I signed up. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's, it's important uh, for all um, existing students and fresh graduates to, to, to create that network. Because uh, it's, it's very important to, sometimes it's also the, the people that you know, 
uh, the, the people who can probably mentor you, uh, can, be, can help you to point you to a direction, to a correct direction, uh, that would actually fast track and make it more efficient in, in your career mm -hmm. path. So I think that is what I'll do. It's given the opportunity. Yeah. Actually, just to add on to what Jasmine said, I, I share her sentiments because I didn't join all these student chapters and no, I, uh, I was already doing quite a lot of mechanical work after my diploma. I didn't even know this organization existed until one of my, my, my ex-boss, who is a PE, who's very involved, uh, invited me into the organization. So this, this link is very important. There may be a lot of people out there who might not even know that this opportunity exists. So uh, I, I share Jasmine's sentiment that it could be a faster track if you know you know, all these opportunities much earlier. Mm. Then, then you will be able to listen to perspectives from those people who have already spent 30 years in the industry. I mean, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, right? Yes, that's true. You just need to make the wheel better. And yeah. I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. So uh, it's always good to listen to, you know, those who have already gone through that path mm. before. Yeah. Yeah. Makes it so much efficient. Yeah. I yeah. think another important thing is to also pursue uh, this opportunity, mm -hmm. a professional engineer or a chartered engineer. Yes. Right. Yeah. That one, uh, this, this, a, 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 this one, you know, uh, chartered engineership is a recognition uh, by, by the industry peers that you are of a certain quality of a certain standing engine or from, from this particular engineering sector. And there are a variety of, of chartered engineering mm -hmm. uh, for, for quite a widespread of engineering uh, sectors so far. Um, IES is expanding uh, the chartered ship as much as we can, as fast as we can. Yeah. Um, so there will be uh, recognition for all types of engineering possible. So I think it's very important to also be recognized in the yes. industry, uh, you're of a certain standing after uh, like say four or five years of, of mm -hmm. practicing as an engineer. So I think we should pursue that. Yeah, yeah I agree. I fully agree with, with mm -hmm. her because uh, people do more when they are appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you uh, to our panelist members um, for joining us in today's session. Um, and Thank you as well to our audience for joining us uh, via our live streaming because of the COVID pandemic that is uh, happening across the world. Right? So um, thank you once again and um, we will catch with you soon again.